I've been researching liquid crystal emulsions. So I'm going to tell you a bit about them today. But before I start, I have to tell you what a liquid crystal is. So we've all heard of the different phases of matter, solids, liquids and gases. But have you ever heard of liquid crystals? The liquid crystalline phase arises in materials that have oddly shaped molecules. Most materials we encounter in life are made up of spherical molecules, and so they are isotropic, which means they have the same properties in all different directions. Liquid crystals, on the other hand, are made of rods or disks and are therefore anisotropic, and they have different properties in different directions. There are many different types of liquid crystals, but I'm going to describe to you one of them which I worked with in my experiments. Thermotropic liquid crystals work in quite a simple way. When they're cold, they all huddle together and point roughly in the same direction. Not too much positional order is seen, but they all point along these parallel lines shown by the red arrows. Then you heat up this liquid crystal and the rods move, all pointing in different directions. When it's in the isotropic phase, there's no net direction. A thermotropic liquid crystal that is widely used in research is 5CB. 5CB is a man-made liquid crystal. It was synthesized in the hopes that it would be pneumatic at room temperature. The pneumatic temperatures of 5CB are between 24 degrees Celsius and 35 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I should probably get to the point already. What are liquid crystal emulsions? First of all, an emulsion is a mixture of two fluids that can't mix, so they'll form droplets instead. If we have oil and water, two fluids that don't like to mix, we can make oil droplets inside water or water droplets inside oil. Emulsions are everywhere and you'd be hard pressed to live a day in your life without encountering one. For example, mayo is an emulsion, skin creams, paint, and milk are all emulsions. Instead of making an emulsion with oil and water, two isotropic fluids, wouldn't it be much more exciting to see what happens with an aromatic liquid crystal mixed with an isotropic fluid? Well, we've tried that in the lab and I can show you exactly what happens. If we zoom in to a singular droplet of water inside 5CB, we can see the rods aligning parallel to the surface. What we can see here is planar anchoring. Anchoring just means the way the liquid crystal molecules lay next to the droplet surface. Then, when we zoom back out, we can see all the little water droplets inside 5CB. This is with planar anchoring. And the emulsion here isn't that stable. You can see they all aggregate into little clusters. But if we want a more stable emulsion, maybe we need to change the anchoring. There are two types of anchoring, planar and normal. So how about we try normal anchoring? We achieve this by adding a charged surfactant. These just change the surface properties between the droplet and the liquid crystals. When we add just a tiny bit of this ingredient, a whole structure changes in this emulsion. You can see the water in blue forms a honeycomb structure with liquid crystal droplets inside. And then even weirder, you get water droplets inside the liquid crystal inside the water. This is how the surfactant achieves this structure. The negative heads sit happily in the water because water has charge. And then their tails align alongside the liquid crystal molecules. You can see here we've got water in 5CB in water. This behaviour, where the water forms a very thin honeycomb structure background, is similar to the way mayonnaise is structured. Therefore, it's quite thick like mayonnaise. However, 5CB is toxic, so I wouldn't go putting it on your sandwiches. If we continue research into these liquid crystal emulsions, Maybe we'll end up seeing them being used in industry. For example, encapsulating flavours in food, drug delivery, or even encapsulating active ingredients in face creams. 